welcome to Goida Square TV. My name is Sarana Shutt and I'm an alderman at the City of Palmerston. And today we're talking to Emily from the Cool Mob, Smart Cooling in the Tropics. Emily, nice to see you today. Thank you, Sarana. How are you? I'm very well. So, can you tell me a little bit about Smart Cooling in the Tropics? Yep, Smart Cooling in the Tropics is a new, uh, funded, fully funded project by the Commonwealth Department of Industry. So we've received money to audit, energy audit, 480 homes in the Territory. It's the only one of its kind in the Northern Territory in a tropical environment. And we're looking at research and data after we audit those homes on what actions that we implement will actually make good savings on people's energy bills and also on their thermal comfort. So in 2014, I understand there's a lot of people that have received some very high energy bills and I know that a lot of people are looking at ways that they can decrease their power bills and that's the type of thing that you can help with, right? Yep, it's fantastic. It's, it's only for eligible households but it is a free funded project so I, I reiterate that because it's really important. A lot of people get scared that, oh, a free thing. But uh, we go out to people's homes and we'll audit their um, homes, have a look at what they're using and how they're using energy in the, in the home, the housing design, and then offer them some free services. And those services can range from monitors, um, energy timers uh, for pools and pumps or you know appliances, then right through to the higher end stuff, which is external shading, shade cloth blinds, as well as um, roof ventilation, air conditioning clean. So there's a whole lot of free stuff. Um, and we do help people uh, understand energy bills and try and reduce it just through other actions as well in the home. So who's eligible for this? Okay, so anyone who owns a private home, so a private home or private rental, so it can be owned or mortgaged or you can be in a private rental, um, and you have to be on eligible Centrelink payments, and those can range from New Start, uh, pensioners, um, the carer's allowance, carer's supplement or carer's payment. You can live in Yilly Housing, um, and then you could just be meeting our criteria on low income, which could include the amount of children that you have or dependents in the home. So it's best to just give us a call um, and talk to us, Serena, and, and we can talk you through what's eligible. So I also hear you, you run some really amazing workshops. Um, can you tell us about the workshops that you hold and who are they for? Okay, so they're for all our participants, but we have opened it up to pretty much anyone who might be interested in that category of coming along. Um, in our eligibility category, if they wanted to come along and have a look at um, how to understand your current energy bill, look at better ways to use their home and appliances to reduce their energy. Um, and we hold those at the Palmerston Community Library as well as the Casuarina Community um, Library down there at um, Casuarina. So in, in 30 seconds, what are the highlights of what the Cool Mob actually offer in smart cooling in the tropics? Okay, free first and foremost. Friendly staff project officer to come out and have a look at your home, give you some really good ideas um, and give you a report on, on how you can do things better, as well as free actions. So some of those things I talked about earlier, some of those treatments that we can pr provide to your home and the great workshops to follow up that. The workshop, uh, the program finishes, project finishes at the end of this year. So we've got 480 spots of about 200 have gone. So if we can get more people in um, and then it's all finished, so get in quick if they can. Okay, so um, Cool Mob and Smart Cooling in the Tropics have partnerships with community organisations. Can you tell us a, a bit about that, Emily? Okay, so we've, we've partnered up with COTA, uh, which is Council on the Ageing, Melaleuca Refugee um, Centre, as well as Yilly Housing and Carers NT. And they're partnerships to help us recruit people. So if anybody is already a membership, uh, has a membership with those organisations, they can contact through them uh, directly to get a hold of us. Otherwise, um, they help us recruit and they obviously have act a, um, a handout to all those people that might be eligible for this project. Um, we also have a partnership with CDU, Charles Darwin University, and they're collecting all the data. So the data that we do collect in these surveys at people's energy assessments and audits, um, that goes to CDU and then ultimately CSIRO, where they will be um, put into some sort of hopefully larger report that can look at um, housing needs and how we can improve people's thermal comfort in the future and housing design. So I understand that you have gone to many households already and there's some good news stories that have come out of it. Have you got any examples of a case study of a really good news story of, of the energy that they've used decreasing? Yep. So a lot of the, um, the hard data hasn't come through yet but we have had some anecdotal evidence just from a couple of participants. Uh, one received roof paint and um, 
but if we had temperature and data loggers within the home to measure how much she used air conditioning if that changed at all, but also temperature loggers. And at, at first thing, within uh, a few hours, she said that she realised that it would be two to three degrees cooler on the temperature gauges that she was looking at within the roof paint going on. So that's one just anecdotal evidence, but obviously the hard data will come at the end. Another lady here in Palmerston uh, was audited and she said that after we provided actions on her report to follow, she's compared it with her last wet season bill and this wet season bill was actually 25% lower than last, last year. So just with some basic actions that we can you know, get people to do and a lot of it's behaviour change as well. Wow, 25% decrease. Yeah, and that's, that's awesome. It's usually very achievable too, just that those sort of levels because people don't recognise smaller things that they can do around the home. So when's the report going to be released? I think sometime in 2015, maybe mid to late January, even February, um, and that will be just the start report, but hopefully it will all feed into, as I said, larger data to CSIRO, and then we can get maybe some good policies back to government to say, this is how people feel, um, and this is what they suffer from. Because thermal comfort, and we already we can recognise that it's not so much temperatures that we receive in Darwin, but the humidity that really knocks people around. Decreasing humidity, absolutely. I don't know how we're going to do that. But <laughs> Every little bit counts, though. That's true. Uh, have you got a website that people can go to? We do. So it would be www.coolmob.org. So to contact um, Coolmob, uh, what's the contact number to contact you, Emily? Okay, so if people are thinking that they might be eligible for this project, please get in quickly. Uh, the number is 89 813 642 and give us a call. We can always help you and check it out. And um, CoolMob might be able to put you on a list if you don't meet our eligibility for some other stuff outside of this project anyway. Do you have any final messages for the City of Palmerston residents? I think the biggest thing is to look at the housing design to start with and try and use passive cooling where you can. Fans can often and jumping in the pool can be so much better than switching on the air con. Just turn it, t turn it up a few degrees on the air con and have a fan running at the same time. What is the ideal temperature that the air conditioner should be on? Okay, so we recommend 26 to 27 degrees with a fan running. And as I said, Sarana, it's not so much about the temperature, which people go, it's 27. It's actually about the humidity, so that's what the air conditioner will do. 27 is a very comfortable temperature for most people. With a fan running, it just reduces that humidity in the air. And it's really important to stay hydrated and jump in a pool whenever you can. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Thank you, Emily, from CoolMob uh, for coming by. And please continue to watch Goiter Square TV here at Palmerston.